welcome to Investors Hangout. This weekly interaction to help you learn and understand savings and investment issues is brought to you by Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund and Value Research. Over the last year, a few debt fund schemes gave extraordinary returns, but most did not exceed investors' expectations. Now that the RBI has also increased interest rates, what should you as an investor do? Out of the 16 debt fund schemes available out there, where should you invest? To get answers to all those questions and much more, watch today's episode. So interest rates have an inverse relationship with the prices of the bonds. What happens is when RBI increases interest rates, the new bonds that are issued carry higher coupons, thus making the existing bonds in the market relatively unattractive because they carry lower coupons. To compensate for that lower payouts, the prices of the bonds fall. Now in case of a debt fund, your NAV reflects the prices of the underlying bonds it holds. When the bond prices fall, the NAV falls reflecting as a loss for you. And with you know more rate hikes anticipated, debt funds will be witnessing a fair share of volatility from here on, at least till the time RBI is through with the entire interest rate cycles. Thus, as an investor, you should be prepared for witnessing negative return instances for some period of a time from here on. But how it impacts different debt funds depends on the kind of bonds it's holding. While officially we have 16 type of debt categories, they can broadly be classified into 3-4, depending upon the kind of bond they are investing in, the rating of the bonds and based on duration. So here based on duration, we have a few with a very short maturity duration, then short term funds, medium term funds and long term funds. We also have a category called as dynamic bond category, which has the flexibility to tactically shift between longer and shorter duration papers. So when I was previously talking about the magnitude of fall that each of these categories might witness, it's the longer duration papers that will be most or the worst affected, so to say. Thus, the longer tenured funds will be the worst affected. And as you can see, the chart that has come up on the screen, you can clearly witness how the shorter term papers or the shorter term funds have been the least impacted as RBI surprised the entire market with the repo hike and the longer duration ones, which are all the way down in the negative territory. To answer that question, in any case, re retail investors should stick to the shorter maturity end uh, of the curve and therefore invest in short maturity papers. More so in a rising rate environment, of course, as I mentioned previously, these will be less impacted because of interest rate movements. They have another additional advantage that will be because of the shorter maturity period, what happens is that their assets come up for redeployment quickly. So what happens is that the money is reinvested at higher yields because of course the rates are back up now and thereby they generate higher returns going forward. Now we have six kind of categories, official categories in the shorter maturity end. We have overnight, liquid, ultra short, low duration, money market and short duration funds. To explain a bit about all of them, let's start with overnight. As the name suggests, it invests in uh, securities with maturity of up to one day. For liquid funds, it's maturity of up to three months. For ultra short duration, while they can invest across the debt instrument uh, spectrum that we have, they have to maintain an overall portfolio duration of three to six months. This duration limit for a low duration fund will be six to 12 months. For money market category, again, as the name suggests, it invests in money market instruments of up to one year maturity. The last is the short duration category, which at a portfolio level have the mandate to invest across debt instruments and uh, maintain a portfolio duration of one to three years. But you don't need so many. So for you know your immediate needs for up to say a one year period, you can look to invest in liquid funds. And for periods beyond that time frame, short durations are a perfect fit. But if you are worried of how this interest rate trajectory will pan out from here on, and uh, would want to invest for a little over a year, then you can also look at ultra short duration funds, which on risk return spectrum lies somewhere in between liquid and short duration funds. Returns of short duration funds have been subdued lately. And well, it's no surprise, we've been in the low interest rate regime for so long. Another factor affecting their returns is the conservative approach that these funds had taken, you know, investing in safer assets in the aftermath of the ILFS fiasco of 2018. 
so that is another point but still the three year average return of the category stands at 6% what you also get here is a favorable tax treatment if you hold these funds for a period of 3 years because you get the benefit of indexation right to explain it a bit indexation is basically uh, based on the concept of inflation eating into your returns and thus tax should only be paid on real gains right real gains means inflation adjusted returns so uh, exactly what indexation does is it adjusts your cost of acquisition of any security to inflation for instance let's say you bought a security at rupees 100 and held it for a period uh, of several years owing to inflation the 100 uh, amount has gone to now 115 So for calculating the capital gain tax liability this 115 will be used thereby reducing your overall tax liability. One category of funds that has been garnering much of investor attention is of credit risk. As the name suggests it takes bets on riskier papers. Now the traction is to some extent because of the fact that a few of these funds have given extraordinary returns in the last one year. Well, it's important to see how these returns have been generated. The debt fund industry has over the last 3-4 years been witnessing a host of downgrades, defaults and consequently segregation of portfolios. And this category, mind you, was one of the worst affected ones during this whole uh, period. And you know the recovery from the these defaulted and downgraded bonds is now being reflected in these returns. Well, as they say, there is no free lunch. Extra return always comes with extra risk. When it comes to debt fund investing you shouldn't get venture sum here the motive shouldn't be return generation what the objective should be is to preserve your capital and generate slightly higher than fds well with that it's a wrap keep watching the space for more information if you like the show do subscribe to our youtube channel take care bye for now